Um, hey, there, there, there was a guess what? There was a little backstage problem with CM Punk this week. I know. Again? You're shocked. <laughs> That's the face of disbelief. Jesus. Uh, I don't know. What are you hearing? When's enough? When's enough enough? Perry and Punk, I guess, both suspended. I don't know I'll the terms you, you of know, it. Honest to God, I mean, and, and this is in all seriousness. What I what I um, take from this whole thing is he needs serious uh, help. He needs mental health. Do you think? Yes. Yes. You don't it's just a, think this is a, this is a, is a behavior no, this, disorder. No, this, that's yeah, just, well, it's what is mental health? Yeah, I guess, but uh, an attitude. Uh, no, no. Oh, this is this is it's when when it becomes destructive when you go after when you when it, there's a chance of this costing you millions of dollars, and you just continue to push and push and push. I think it's become that. his calling card in a way. He wasn't doing this shit in Ring of Honor. Was he a problem in Ring of Honor? I I never heard from anyone that he was a problem. I, I never. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I think he was with LA Knight there. I don't know. I, I I don't know. This it it just this has kind of become an identity. The difficult one. Well, yeah. I mean, but they. You you a little bit. You had that a little bit. You might walk into a locker room. And. Uh, and and get a little loud. Maybe turn to someone. And go okay. I had to do that because whatever. Because it, it becomes an identity a little. It becomes expected no, I, a little. If it's, if it's a work, he's not working. Who, who's he working? Working himself out the fucking door. He's, you you really think they? You really think they'd let him go? They have to. Mm, I don't know. If you it was really, any other you, business, yes. If it was any other no, business, no. But yes. I, it, he doesn't. He doesn't. For what he's doing to that company, and and because I'll tell you right now, man, if, if I would have broke in and saw some motherfucker doing that shit, and I said, "Oh, he can get away with that." Fuck, then I'm going to do it. Well, the altercation was was over something that. Uh, <clears throat> That he said uh, that uh, Jack Perry said on the mic about the glass, the the windshield glass, crit- critical of of Punk, and I guess embarrassed him. Um, is that like like I remember asking you or or Sean or maybe both when I for Sean's book when I'm I was talking about the uh, the Horseman uh, parody that you guys did, which was a little stiff. And you guys had to walk back behind the curtain, and Oli's there, and Flair's there, and they probably weren't happy. Uh, but my whole thing. But is it was this. a successful segment. No, but my whole thing is this: that's bullshit. Because they sat there and watched me in in in, in makeup for an hour be made. But they didn't know what you were going to say. We were going <laughs> to. They didn't know how stiff you guys were going to get. A little bit of it was, some of it was personal. Changed the main event of the fucking pay per view. But it was, but I'm saying that they were professionals and maybe they weren't happy, but that spot, that segment was, was good for the show. People were going to yeah. talk about that. I don't think anybody had done a parody before. I don't know. Maybe maybe WWE was doing those uh, Nacho Man and Ted. No, but not uh, not with the boys. Not to draw money. Just to. Oh oh, in the in the ring. Yeah yeah yeah. Right right. I don't know. It just seems like. I I I agree with you that it's 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 not conduct that you should be dealing with in a locker room in any sport, but maybe. I think maybe at this point, too much to lose to let him go. 
at this point. What, what what's there to lose? He's a draw. He has this cultish uh, attraction. Fans have a cultish attraction to him. Yeah, so does Trump. Right. And that and there's a whole party that's going to give him a nomination despite 91 felonious charges. We'll see. So, so I, as I say, so it, I, I guess it's not so much an AEW thing. It's just an American thing. Yeah, you might be right about that. You might be right about that. I just they, think that to, Tony Khan needs to get somebody there to be a heater. Well, that's he needs, he needs to bring somebody in. If he's not going to, <clears throat> Vince wouldn't put up with that shit. Oh, absolutely, and that's what I was going to say. Isn't it at some point just disrespect to your company? Yes, it's dis- it's disrespect to Tony, right? And you know, I just think that and Tony's not that. You know, to me, it's it's to me, Punk's almost a bully at the, at this point because he knows that Tony's not. That's just not in his DNA. Like. I just I, I I just have a hard it's just so you would unequivocally as Tony Khan toss him yeah okay they had their big pay per view of course where this happened and uh, well I mean and, and the thing is that him and Samoa Joe went out and, and from what I've heard had a great match and it was right after that I heard uh, right it was he went right out. Uh, after that, and but but my whole thing is this: if you can't if you can't go out in front of eighty thousand people and fucking forget about everything and just do what you do, well, he especially did. with that, yeah, especially with that far of a walk to the ring, it's like, oh, why maybe, fight before? You mean why bother fighting beforehand? You've got eighty thousand people there to see. No, I'm just saying though that that uh, no matter what happens, even if Sandusky got a hold of you in the shower. I think you could still fucking shake it off by the time you got at the ring in front of 80,000 people. And Man, that put, house was put, legit. Did you see that fucking? Yeah. That was incredible. <clears throat> um, it brought to mind some of the great pay-per-views over the years. Uh, like Rocksteady did when he asked, did either of you work with the great Rip Torn? Did he share similar love for wine? I didn't. I loved him on the Gary Shandling. Uh, it wasn't called the Gary. Was it called? No, it was called. Uh, what was that? Where he was the host. We've talked about that show. Um, Larry Sanders show. Larry Sanders show. That was it, right? Yeah. yeah Rip Torn was great as the uh, producer on that. Did you do anything with him ever? No. No. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure, I mean, who knows? If Rip loved wine. Is that a thing? Like, did, did people know Rip loved wine? I don't know. Have to, have to, well, he's, he's passed, hasn't he? So it's, uh, we have no opportunity to ask him. Fer, Fernum Schnavitz, your, your brother requested more Fernum Schnavitz. So here he is. You mentioned hotels on the road back in the day. How often was the bed not big enough for your height? I'm just over six feet tall, and sometimes my feet are hanging off a hotel bed. I mean, when you, when you got doubles, you're fucked. You have to sleep sideways, you know, corner to corner. King size bed, king size bed. I still have to kitty corner myself. Yeah, see, that's funny. I never thought about that. Yeah. Well, probably king size bed seven six, feet, six. but yeah, king size bed six six. Hmm. So, did uh, which hotels did you favor a chain when you guys had to book your own stuff? Did you favor a certain chain? Shit, I mean, the, we're, we're, I think you and I were having this conversation the other day. It was you know when we were on the road, three hundred and ten, three hundred twenty days a year. You drove to the next town, and you found a hotel. It was like mm. okay, like like you want to get off in this exit. All right, let's get off in this exit. There's four hotels, and then you you know, 
the best ones were the red roof ends because they were cheap and you could if you got a bottom floor you could back the car right up to the door and you didn't have to drag your bags all over the place so those were like in the winter time they're a little stiff when you <laughs> open the door to go get towels or something from the maid you got to you know, you're you're in the elements but Mm-hmm. What was the one uh, that was filled? There was a festival we were talking about, and uh, you ended up having to sleep on the hood of the car. Cause oh, the, we, we were in Thunder Bay, and there was some kind of a festival, and we we didn't have rooms. I mean, it was a small, small, you know, it was Thunder Bay's. This is Thunder Bay's second week in a row that they've been mentioned. Cause that's last right. week, Last week, I talked about uh, working at Independent with Terry Funk. Um, but we, uh, we were up in Thunder Bay. I, I, I don't remember what exactly festival they had going on, but they had something going on, and man, it was, it was packed. So, in the summertime. so you go out to the, the Chevy Lumina gimmick. What did you have? No, we, we were, there was, uh, it was me, Henning, Scott and Sean. I think we had a Lincoln town car, but like that big Lincoln town car that you could put. You know, eight bodies in the trunk. And and laid the hood and windshield because you're laying yeah, you like, you lay, too, you put, you, put your put your head your head and back against the windshield. And I, I did that in the military. You, you know, you get a couple hours sleep and it, you have to put that camouflage shit over the top of your vehicle. And then you just lay on the hood. Mm-hmm. Wow. Anything from the audience? What do we got here? From our live audience that you could be a part of if you go to clickthis.com. 